Joining me now is Congressman Mark Desagne, who sits on the House Committee on Education and the Workforce. Congressman, thank you for joining us. My pleasure. Thanks for asking me. Absolutely. Well, to start off, how many borrowers are going to have the ability to benefit from this? Well, there are 6.9 borrowers in the program right now, uh, but then it depends on, as you just outlined, uh, certain criteria. So if they've paid uh, on time for 10 years, if their debt is less than 12,000, then basically uh, that's the framework. So it's up to 6 point million. Okay, 6.9 million. Just to clarify, do borrowers actually have to apply or will it just be done automatically? Under certain circumstances, it'll be done automatically, but they should consult with their service provider or their counselor. Now, if borrowers missed a payment, will there be any opportunity to appeal? Again, they should talk to their counselor, um, their financial counselor, or their service provider, or they can talk, uh, talk to their member of Congress's office. The average student loan debt borrowed for a four-year bachelor's degree was 30500 in 2020. That's according to the National Center for Education Statistics. Do you think that $12,000 figure, the ceiling, should be raised? I think we have to consider these things, Stephanie. What we're struggling with is young people uh, don't have the same opportunities that people of my generation had in terms of the cost of housing, the cost of education. So we're the administration and we Democrats on the committee are trying to address that. We're trying to work with our Republican colleagues on these things. Um, kids growing up right now and coming out of college, they have different challenges than previous generations. So we, we, we repaid our loans, but the circumstances have to be adjusted. And that's what we're struggling with. The cost of housing, uh, healthcare, and in this instance, education is so prohibitive in terms of the value. Uh, it's really a struggle for younger people. The Consumer Financial Protection Bureau said Friday that borrowers are dealing with inaccurate and untimely billing statements and often delays in processing among some other issues. Have you received reports about any of this in, in your office? Yes, and this has been a struggle for a long time. Um, unfortunately, some providers um, don't aren't as ethical as they should be. So we've got to make sure that we hold people accountable uh, and don't mislead people. And, and what are you doing specifically to hold them accountable? We've done a lot of things over the course of time. I've been in office when I was in the legislature. Uh, we, we made people actually prove what their marketing said about the value of their education, um, identify that. And we continue to do that at the federal level and look at other ways. We have to fund more people in the Department of Education to oversee uh, the regulators and the, and the people who are paid to enforce these uh, requirements. Now, student debt in the U.S. now exceeding $1.7 trillion, the vast majority of which is federal debt. How is the federal government going to inform these borrowers they have this ability? Well, where we have direct contract, we will let them know. Um, and we'll do things like these interviews, obviously, and continue to make sure people are aware of it through their service providers, but uh, through their institutions. if they're still going to school or going back or they have contacts. So every means available to let pe people know um, that there are programs, uh, the Supreme Court, the administration was responding in this act uh, to restrictions the Supreme Court put on a previous action by the Biden administration. So this is all statutory, it's under existing law. Interesting, yeah, certainly an ongoing effort. Congressman, you also sit on the House Committee on Transportation and Infrastructure as well as the Subcommittee on Aviation. I wanted to ask you about the Boeing investigation. Have you had a recent briefing on the matter? Yes, uh, and it's very frustrating. Uh, the aviation industry is under a lot of pressure by um, investors to make more money, and we want to make sure that those profits don't come at the expense of the safety of the traveling public. So whether it's Boeing um, or any of the airlines, we're working very hard to make sure they get the message that the Congress is watching. Uh, we have an FAA reauthorization that's now being held up in the Senate that has a number of provisions that I put in there to make sure that um, we've got more transparency in this instance, like with Alaska. Uh, we'll be able to go in and actually see who the mechanics were and who the people who assembled that plane and that door were. We don't have that right now. When do you think these Boeing 737 MAX 9s will be safe enough to fly to be operational? 
Well, we're going to stay on it uh, to make sure the FAA does its due diligence. Uh, and we, meaning the Congress and myself specifically in the committee. So they're not going to fly until they're safe. All right, Congressman, I thank you for your time and we appreciate your insight as always. My pleasure. Thanks for asking me.